Forgive me, friends, for I have sinned. <laughs> it's been 43 years since my last confession. In other words, I've never done this before. But I'm really grateful for the opportunity to purify my soul with you here tonight. I was born to a sacrilegious family in northern New Jersey. They taught me to swear at the ripe age of one. I may need to borrow a few of your rosaries when this presentation is over. That's me, cursing. My very unconventional mother scoffed at the idea of college and told me to get a job and pursue art. <laughs> I decided to try and get a life, and instead I got a degree in English literature. <laughs> Today I'm a personal trainer, a health coach, and an oil painter. I have a beautiful, loving husband, and a very rich life. But I am far from a virtuous or model citizen. That's our house. I do these pictures. <laughs> This ellipsis, dot, 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 indicates the passing of time from when I finished school in New York City and moved to Big Sky, Montana, where I failed miserably at being a ski bum, I worked in a bookstore for minimum wage, and I bartended. Then I moved to Northern California for a few years, where I proved my mother right by taking art classes, and I became a personal trainer but I didn't become a trainer to save the world and help everyone get healthy. It was to support my art habit. It was a means to an end. With several paintings sold, a very optimistic friend convinced me that I should quit my personal training job and become a full-time artista. Two months later, his car was repossessed and I was digging through the couch for change. <laughs> This dark, murky slide is like my relationship with money. It's only in the last few years that I realized it's healthy to be motivated by money, especially if you want to have health insurance. <laughs> also, while I was in California, I became an accidental vegetarian when I watched this documentary. In it, John Robbins films the inner workings of the beef and poultry industry. I stopped eating cows and chickens that day. I digress. The second reason I became a personal trainer was because also through college, I bartended and then for several years after, I worked in gigantic nightclubs and small, dark, smoky bars. In short, I poisoned thousands of people. <laughs> Today, I enjoy a domesticated lifestyle, but to my husband's dismay, my favorite pastime has become watching documentaries on health and nutrition. <laughs> they often leave me wondering, what can I do about it? What can I do about it? A little over a year ago, I read this teeny, tiny, very powerful book. And in it, Stefan Hessel says, if we're not outraged by something going on around us, then we're not paying attention. He says, life is short. We must do something. So he motivated me to be on a mission to help end childhood obesity in one generation. And also, unlike the folks listed on this slide, to live my life and run my business with love and transparency, which is how I ended up here in front of you tonight. And I have to add that this is the first time in American history that children, the generation being born today, have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. They deserve better than this. So, on my quest, I began an online health coaching school, and on the first day, an instructor said, can you believe there are still people
people starting every morning with a cup of coffee and winding down after work with a glass of wine, I thought I would be expelled on the spot. <laughs> How can I, with my love of sugar and caffeine and alcohol, be a health coach and be transparent? Well, as an American, it's ingrained in me that I can overcome anything and I can reinvent myself every day. <laughs> health coaching school has definitely made me acutely aware of my addictions and made me modify my behavior. So now in the morning, I drink some water before I have a coffee. And at night after work, when I have some wine, I don't drink the whole bottle. <laughs> And when I'm drinking whiskey, I say to my body, take that liver. <laughs> and if I'm having sugar, I say, hey, Candida, you want a treat? <laughs> it changes the process. And if we wait for perfection in order to take action, it results in a life unfulfilled. Ring the bell that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Due to time constraints, I cannot tell you about any more of my sins tonight. I would like to thank Bozeman Gold Toastmasters for giving me the courage to stand up here, the Bachakacha Board for making this event possible, my husband Colin Corcoran, and all of you for coming out tonight and truly making this a community event. Thank you.